Hey, my name is Ryan Leak. I'm a best-selling author, executive coach, and motivational speaker that gets an opportunity to inspire C-suite executives, leaders, and teams all around the world. Fast Company recently came out with an article about how employee engagement is out and what organizations desperately need is not an engaged employee, but an inspired one. Through my executive coaching practice, I've had a front row seat to see how leaders and team members work when they're inspired. I've also seen how they work when they aren't inspired. Do you want to know what people can pull off when they're inspired? Their goals. They can sell more. They can create more. They can overcome adversity. They can push through mental health challenges. You can have the most talented team in the world, but if they're not inspired, they won't win. Now here's the deal. Don't we all know what an uninspired team member looks like? Late, lazy, lack of follow through, lack of purpose, lack of vision for the future. And that's why events matter. They serve as a rally point, a catalyst for inspiration. And it's also why who you have speak at that event matters. And that's where I come in. What's it like? to be on the other side of me. Have you ever considered what it is like to be across the room from you, across the Zoom from you? Have you ever considered what it's like to be married to you, what it's like to be parented by you? What's it like to be on a reply all from me? What's it like to be stuck in a group chat with me? What's it like to be on the other side of me? Like some of us, we just go, it's awesome. Are you sure? <laughs> When I think about what it's like to be on the other side of me, I, I just want to be considerate because it may not be as enjoyable as I think it is. So if you want to take your leadership to the next level, you have to be asking yourself this question. What's it like to be on the other side of me? It would be helpful if you asked somebody else to verify. The way I describe Ryan Week is that he comes into a room and commands it. He walks in, he's got a tremendous sense of humor, he's happy. He brings a positive energy into the space. So if you have a group of people that you want lifted up, engaged, no one does it better. He literally pulls personalities and conversations out of people that normally would not speak up. And the number one fear that will hold you back in your career, the number one fear that will stall your business is the fear of failure. It is this fear of putting myself out there and being rejected. And so what, one of the things that I want you to understand about the most successful people in the world, every single person that you and I look up to, follow, admire, and read about, they all have one thing in common, failure. So the very thing we fear the most is the very thing that made successful people who they are. And so today, I'm gonna encourage you to get outside of your comfort zone. Today, I'm gonna encourage you to take a risk and go after a client that you think is ungettable or unapproachable. Several years ago, we had Ryan Leak speak at our national conference. And I have to say, we were remarkably amazed at how well he communicated to our audience, even though it was a unique audience. And since then, he has been one of the most requested communicators at our conference every year. I think for a number of reasons. First of all, you know that he's prepared. He understands the audience he's talking to. He actually called us several times before the actual presentation because he wanted to get into the hearts and minds of the people he would be connecting to. And so you could tell when he stepped on the stage that he knew where they were and where they were coming from. I know for us as an organization, we can't even imagine doing an event or a conference without asking Ryan Leak to be a part of it because he changes the game. And you can just have this mantra that thinks the world would be a better place if everybody else just changed. But that's just not how leaders think. Leaders walk in a room and they think, man, this organization would be better if I change. Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. If everyone else in the organization is the problem in your mind, I just have to tell you, that's bad math. <laughs> because it's easy for you and me to walk around and pretend to be a know-it-all or a know-them-all. 
So what, what leaders have to do is they, they have to walk in rooms and instead of assuming that they know everybody in there, they have to begin to ask the question, what's it like to be you? I think of the three day retreat, this was probably the best experience and having Ryan there was just, um, he was so relatable. Just from the, the minute he started, I think he felt, he made everybody feel welcome and he came across as very authentic. Um, it didn't feel like we were being spoken to. It felt like we were really part of an experience and going on a journey. I, I gotta tell you the truth. The greatest temptation any of your team members have is to lie to you. You wanna know why? Because they like health insurance. That's why, okay? Like that's why people lie to their leaders all the time. So it's the leader's job to go, hey, I want you to know honesty and feedback is welcomed here. I think we must understand the power of intellectual humility. Intellectual humility is the importance of knowing you could be wrong. Not that you are. I'm not saying you're wrong. I didn't say that. I'm saying you could be. Uh, every single leader, when, when you're leading someone, there is an automatic intimidation factor that you need to bring that wall down and let people in your world know, hey, I've got some thoughts. Hey, I've gotten this far in life for a reason. However, as successful as I am, I still, every now and then, could be wrong. Today, I want you to reach out to three to five colleagues and ask them how you can get better. And you just ask them, hey, how, how can I get better? The first time I did this, I did this with some friends. I said, man, guys, help me, help, help, help me get better. I'm gonna tell you how this is gonna go. My friend said, hey, Ryan, I'll be honest with you. I don't even think about you that much, man, sorry. I'm like, Another, another guy goes, man, you're pretty sharp, man. I go, no, no, come on, man, help me. He's like, well, if I'm being nitpicky, I said, yeah, that's exactly what I want. He goes, Ryan, I don't know how to tell you this. I said, man, come on, man, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm bracing for impact, tell me. He said, man, well, you walk really fast. I said, what? He said, man, you're the fastest walker I know. I said, I said what are you talking about? He goes, Ryan, you do events. He goes, and there's, and there's times when you get done you are walking so fast through a lobby that you actually ignore people. And I know that's not who you want to be. He goes, but Ryan, I've seen you slow down. I've seen you look people in the eyes and it means something to them. So if I were you, if there was one way that I could help Ryan get better, I would just say, slow down. I'd say that Ryan Leake set the tone for our retreat. His presentation was upbeat and exciting and got us off on the right foot. I think the key takeaway for me was just the whole concept of chasing failure. I immediately went out and got Ryan Leake's book and within two days I'd read the entire book and, and gave me perspective on how I can move forward and take his chasing failure message with me. When you go to failure school, what you will learn is that failure loses its grip when you just keep moving forward. The whole goal of failure is to get you to stop trying. The whole goal of failure is to get you to stop being brave, to get you to stop being courageous. But there's something about an executive, there's something about a leader, there's something about a team member that just makes a decision. When looking at a setback, I'm just gonna keep moving forward. Do not wait for Monday because Monday is Motivational Monday and we all got great intentions to be awesome when? First thing Monday morning, okay? First thing Monday morning, I'm gonna start working out. First thing Monday morning, I'm gonna try something new. First thing Monday morning, first thing Monday morning. But guess what? It's a Thursday and it's a great day to change. One of my favorite parts of my job is the behind the scenes work I get to do with leaders and event planners to understand the biggest challenges their audience has. For me, I absolutely love what I do and it's never just another keynote for me. And I wanna make sure that what I put together for an event speaks to their pain points and inspires them to overcome. It would be my pleasure to work with you and add value to your next event.